Hello, people of YouTube. My name is Steve Gray. This is Gray's Guitars, and thank you for watching. Today, we are bringing back a fan favorite, Don't Buy. That's right. I'm going to be making this probably a series, and there's going to be a whole bunch of Don't Buy videos from now on. So today, we're going to be talking about Don't Buy a Fender USA Stratocaster. We're going to make this guitar-specific, so it's going to be an individual guitar or an individual model. So this isn't like every Stratocaster ever. This is specifically a Fender USA Stratocaster. So let's start off with what they look like. This is not a USA Stratocaster. This is a Squire Stratocaster. Price-wise, price-wise, $2,000 for a good one. $2,000. You can get a Squire for like $200 and it comes with an amp too. That is ridiculous. Not to mention, you can also get a Mexican version of the thing for probably $1,000, literally half the price. So that's my biggest grief is for $1,000 less, you can get the exact same guitar, the exact same components, the exact same materials, except it's built in Mexico. So is it worth it to pay $1,000 for a USA stamp on the headstock when the Mexican guitar is literally the exact same thing for half the price? You want to go even cheaper? You want something that's decent? Get yourself like a Signature Series Squire, something like this. This is a Squire Standard Strat. Throw some better pickups in it. $200, you put $100 in pickups in it. Bada bing, bada boom, do a little fret work. You're into that guitar a maximum, maximum of $500. That is one-fourth the price of a USA Strat brand new. One-fourth the price. That is ridiculous. The price of these things is astronomical. Do not buy one. Secondly, are you a boomer? Are you a boomer? Do you live... Were you born in like the 1950s, 60s, early 40s, around that time? That's when this thing was designed. That's when this thing was designed. It's not a new design. It's old. It's ancient. It's like 70 years old, man. <laughs> They have different S-style guitars now. It's the most copied guitar everywhere. Literally, this is the this body shape is the most copied guitar. So you are not going to be original buying this thing because everybody and their mother has one of these things. I can guarantee you if you go to grandma's guitar house right now, grandpa picked up a guitar 30 years ago that was probably a Squire for $200, and I can guarantee you it's sitting in the basement. And it's this exact guitar, not the paint scheme, but it's this exact freaking guitar. What a mess. So many people own these things. Stop buying them. Too many people own them. Everybody and their mother has one of these things. Statistically, if you play guitar at some point in your time, you probably started on a Fender Stratocaster or some sort of Stratocaster variant. Cut it out. Stop buying them. It is terrible. I mean, look, look at this huge heel joint. Some of the new ones, they have this cut away. It took them 70 years to figure out, gee, maybe we should put a better neck joint on that thing so you can actually get upper fret access. You know, I'm, I'm pushing, look, look at this. You see where my thumb placement is? It, it's, it's just so, ugh, look at this. It's like, Egh. it's so awkward. It's so freaking terrible. The heel joint on a lot of guitar, you look at an Ibanez, PV, a lot of other companies were like, oh, we can just round that off. You can get up to 24 frets. Not to mention, 21 frets. Why do most of these stupid things have 21 frets? The vintage ones especially came with 21 frets. Everybody was doing 22 at the time. I hate it. Give me my 22nd fret or give me 24 frets. I do not want 21 frets. Oh, you're never going to use the 20 for, for, for 30 second fret. Yes, you are. There's a lot of songs, especially heavy metal, shreddy stuff, sweet picking. You need that 22nd fret, minimum. You know, you can you can get away with it. You can get away with not having 24 most of the time, but a lot of the times you need to have that extra fret. And this stupid thing right here, there's this is 21. Where's, where's my another fret? You know, I can't even play a lot of Red Hot Chili Pepper songs. Another one, this particular guitar doesn't have it that I really, really hate on a lot of American Fender Strats is the Skunk Stripe. And the reason I hate the skunk stripe is because the neck wood is always maple, which is fine. Maple is a fine wood. But when you put a different wood type in the neck, they grow and shrink at different rates. I had a Stratocaster that had this problem. 
It was a Mexican one. The American ones have the same problem. Either the maple either expands or shrinks a little bit or vice versa with the rosewood skunk stripe and then it messes up the lacquer and you can constantly dig into it in the back of the neck. Keep doing this design. See, look, no skunk stripe. They do not even need to do it. The reason they do it is because of a stupid design they made back in the 50s where they were like, oh, we're not going to put a slab of rosewood on here. We want the entire thing to be maple. We want it to be a one-piece neck because it'll save money or whatever nonsense. Even though statistically, it would save them more time not to route out the stupid skunk stripe and put that other piece of wood in there and just slab on a maple fretboard to the guitar, have a two-piece maple neck instead of a one-piece maple neck. That's the reason. That design is flawed. I do not like it. It will fail over time, especially depending on the, in the environment. Doesn't matter how long you take care of that guitar, at some point in time, statistically, you are going to have to sand down your neck, refinish it, or get a new neck because you're going to have that wood shrinkage. Uh, fret sprout. I have never picked up a fender that doesn't seem to have fret sprout, especially the new ones. I have played several new ones at Guitar Center and every single one, oh, it's the environment change, it's the environment change. Well, Gibson doesn't seem to have a problem with it. Hell, Ebophone doesn't have to seem a problem with it. Squire half the time doesn't have a problem with it. So what what is the issue at the Fender factory that the USA guitars are coming fresh, hot off the presses with fret sprout? Are you not drying out the wood enough? What, what, what's the issue? You know, what, what is the problem? I, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, fix it. Fix that issue. I'm paying two grand for a guitar, and you're giving it to me with freaking fret sprout. That is bullshit. That is nonsense. Another thing that I hate. String trees. String trees. It only took them 70 years to figure out how to design staggered freaking tuners so you don't have to use string trees anymore. And even sometimes with the staggered tuners, you sometimes have to use freaking string trees, which is total utter nonsense. I do not want string trees because if the placement is wrong in the headstock, it's going to go out of tune. If the string tree falls off for whatever reason, going to go out of tune because there's no neck angle. Is it really that hard to do what Gibson does and give us a little bit of a neck angle? It doesn't have to be as potent. You know, PRS figured it out, no problem, but God forbid Fender can just, you know, tilt back that headstock a little bit, maybe give us a nice little scarf joint there, you know, two pieces of wood, extra piece of wood, oh no, tiny bit, little bit more work. But is it really that freaking hard to just tilt it back a little bit or make every single guitar come with staggered tuners from now on so we don't have to deal with stupid string trees? Another thing, massively failed tremolo system uh, or whatever the heck you want to call it. Typically, it's just a one way. I mean, you can go back a little bit, but not a lot. There's this magical thing called a Floyd Rose now and this magical thing called a locking nut. You know, it was invented... Oh, the late 70s, early 80s. It's only been around for like 40 years, give or take a few. Um, and you know when you're like wiggling really, really hard on a Strat? It's never going to go back in tune. If you use the tremolo, it's not going to go back in tune ever. So either put a locking nut on the damn thing so I don't have that problem. Or better yet, bring out the hardtails. Oh, the hard toes don't sell as well. Well, if the only option you give people is a hardtail that's string through the body, guess what they're going to have to buy? They're going to have to buy a hardtail strat. It's going to have better sustain, and I won't have a stupid, crappy, failed tremolo system. Especially on the cheaper ones. The American ones are typically fine, but it's still going to go out of tune. But on these cheaper ones, ugh, there's like no metal on there. The metal is mystery metal. It's garbage. We'll do we'll do a Squire video later on on why you should never buy a Squire strat. Uh, as I said, we're, we're going to stick to the USA model. Another thing I hate with the USA model, uh, string changes are a pain because sometimes the string... The ball ends get stuck in the block. Uh, also, if it's not locked down here, I just realized it would also stay out of tune. So they would actually have to design their own version of a locking tremolo for this thing to actually stay in tune. Uh, the two-point system's a little bit better, but uh, not not a lot, you know? Not not a lot better. Your, your, your main guy, Leo Fender, he left to make better designs to the guitar, and you stuck to the old ones, uh, and it did not do you very well. Another thing I freaking hate is non-fitting correctly bolt-on necks, especially with Americans, because now we have CNC machines. Back in the 50s, I can forgive you a little bit. I, cannot, I can no longer forgive you. Why do I have to shim every fender neck I have ever owned? Every single one. I have to shim it. If you don't know what a shim is, that means you have to put a piece of wood or a piece of paper under the end of this freaking thing, so that way it tilts up higher because your action is sky high. Another thing. 
fix the freaking posts. It's been 70 years. Give us shorter screws. You took away our bridge cover. Yes, a lot of people don't know this. These used to come standard with a bridge cover, so that way these things didn't dig into your hand. But then as more people wanted to palm mute, they took it off. But the screw size had stayed the same for 70 years. And by the time you're done adjusting it, you either have to buy brand new screws for the saddles uh, or cut them or something along those lines for, to stop them from digging into your hand. Also, getting into the pickups, a little bit of a pain. Uh, it's, most of the time you have to unstring everything. I can't just loosen the strings and get around it because you have to do anything electronically. You have to rip off the entire freaking pick guard. There's a wire that is, you know, soldered together in between these two. So... You can't get the input jack out without unsoldering something. And it, it is just the biggest pain. They're annoying to work on. I do not like it. And I think I am done with this video. I, I think I have made my point why you should never buy a Fender USA Stratocaster. Stay tuned for more of my don't buy videos. I will be making more of them depending on how many views this one gets as well. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, leave a like. Feel free to comment down below what you'd like to see for future do not buy videos, guitar, music related, things along those lines. Hit that subscribe and like button while you're down there as well. And of course, because I have to put it as a disclaimer, because some of you people are so thick skulls you don't understand, this entire video is a joke. I own a freaking Stratocaster. Of course I like them, but I'm still going to give you all the things that I think are super annoying about them. Yet again, hit that subscribe button. My name is Steve Gray. This is Gray's Guitars. Thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.